On today's episode, we're going to be checking out why in the world one of America's founding fathers represented Redcoats accused of murdering colonists. I'm Christian Murray, and this is The Founders Club. On March 5, 1770, a confrontation occurred whenever a mob formed around a century. Eight more soldiers joined him as the mob became more threatening. One soldier had fired his musket after being struck by a rock-filled snowball, which had caused a series of other shots from the other soldiers. Colonists in the crowd lay dead, while others were mortally wounded. Captain Thomas Preston, William Wims, James Hardigan, William McCauley, Hugh White, Matthew Kilroy, William Warren, John Carroll, and Hugh Montgomery, soldiers in the English 29th Regiment of Foot, were accused of murdering Crispus Atticus, Samuel Gray, Samuel Maverick, James Caldwell, and Patrick Carr. During this time period, John Adams was a lawyer and leading patriot who was contemplating running for public office. John Adams had his own independent views on the politics of the colonies. Despite his own views, Adams accepted the offer to defend the soldiers after several lawyers refused to accept the case. He wanted to help these soldiers because he wanted to ensure a fair trial. Massachusetts Solicitor General Samuel Quincy and Private Attorney Robert Tree Payne were hired to handle the prosecution. The trial of the eight soldiers opened on November 27, 1770, and the prosecution built their whole case on the soldiers' hatred of the townspeople. They characterized the soldiers as brawling fighters and agitators little better than criminals. They fueled the people's hatred for the British Empire, and how this was just another example of tyranny. They fueled the people's passions. John Adams fully understood why the colonists were angry, but he wanted to fulfill his duty to the law. He was devoted to the right to counsel, and the presumption of innocence in common law. Adams wanted the people to check their passions with reason, so it wouldn't consume them. He asked the jury to look beyond the fact that the soldiers were British and see them as their common man. John Adams did not want the jury to fear these men, but he wanted them to fear the mob that had provoked a, what he called, a justified response from the soldiers. Why we should scruple to call such a set of people a mob, I can't conceive unless that name is too respectable for them. The sun is not about to stand still or go out, nor the rivers to dry up because there was a mob in Boston on the 5th of March that attacked a party of soldiers. Adams had painted this mob as a terrifying force that had attacked the soldiers. He stated that these soldiers were hit by clubs, stones, and snowballs filled with rocks. He argued that these men were assaulted and that they should have the right to defend themselves. He wanted the jury to consider themselves in the same situation and to think what they would do if they were fearing for their lives. Adams even placed himself on the side of the Patriots and agreed with their anger, but it didn't matter because that didn't change the evidence provided. John Adams stated, Facts are stubborn things, and whatever may be our wishes, our inclinations, or the dictates of our passions, they cannot alter the state of facts and evidence. John Adams was successful in his defense of these soldiers despite his own political views on the colonies. Six of the soldiers were fully acquitted while the other two were found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to a branding on the hand. It was a pretty light sentence thanks to Adams because he found a loophole where the guilty soldiers were seen as the clergy, and the only definition of clergyman was the ability to read from the Bible. John Adams stated, The part I took in defense of Captain Preston and the soldiers procured me anxiety and obloquy enough. It was, however, one of the most gallant, generous, manly, and disinterested actions of my whole life, and one of the best pieces of service I ever rendered my country. Judgment of death against the soldiers would have been a foul stain upon this country as the executions of the Quakers and witches anciently. As the evidence was, the verdict of the jury was exactly right. This, however, is no reason why the town should not call the action of that night a massacre, nor is it any argument in favor of the governor or minister who caused them to be sent there. But it is the strongest proofs of the danger of standing armies. The trial, which was seen as unwinnable, set a precedent for the future generations of American lawyers. It was clear that John Adams took his commitment to justice and having a fair trial very seriously. Even though we want something to be true so badly and we might even be passionate about it, it doesn't change what the facts are and what the truth is. We should stand by the truth even if it is unpopular. 
It's like John Adams said, stand on principle even if you do stand alone. Well, that's all we have for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed making it. And we'll see you next time. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you like the channel and want to become a Founders Club member, hit that subscribe button. You can check out our other platforms or even our website linked below, and you can check out more videos on the side. And like always, history is a great story that needs to be told. So tell it.